Hello everyone, my name is Ben Goldberg. I'm an Applications Engineer for Inverid Systems, and today I'm going to talk about an alternate approach to HVAC design to achieve improved indoor air quality and better energy efficiency. Where do we spend most of our time? Although we'd like to think that most of our time is spent in the great outdoors, the truth of the matter is 90% of our time is spent indoors, meaning in a typical 80-year life, 72 years is spent inside. This has created a need for improved indoor air quality. What are some of the main drivers that are impacting building design today? Firstly, the COVID-19 pandemic highlighted the need for improved filtration and ventilation in buildings. And secondly, the growing mountain of research on climate change has created a push for more regulations and codes that call for reduced carbon emissions. Typically, increasing outdoor air ventilation rates has been high on energy consumption, which goes against the climate crisis calls for reduced building emissions. And thirdly, buildings need to have better resilience and less of a reliance on outdoor air during periods where the air can be highly polluted. Take this example of a school in an urban environment. This is a challenge that many designers might face today, where it's next to an industrial environment there are cars, there are planes, so the outside air is not always fresh. Additionally, bringing in large volumes of outdoor air, which follows the old paradigm of dilution as the solution to pollution, is not very energy efficient, especially in climates when the air is very hot and humid and needs to be cooled and dehumidified for occupant comfort. Even the past president of ASHRAE, Bill Banfleth, said that the future of really good indoor air quality is going to be alternatives to ventilation, so we don't have to rely on outside air for everything. We have these very smart buildings, but our strategy to ventilation is not so smart. So what do we suggest? We suggest a clean first approach. What does this clean first approach look like? It's a four step process. And step one is to identify the indoor air quality targets. Step two is to install air cleaning for particles and for gases. Step three, determine the outdoor air requirements. And step four, after this has all been integrated into the HVC system, is to validate, monitor, and control for resilience. This results in what we like to call sustainable indoor air quality, improved indoor air quality, better energy efficiency, and increased resilience of the building. So for step one, how do we set these IAQ targets? ASHRAE 62.1 2019 recently released an addendum, AA, that names 15 specific pollutants of concern and their associated design limits. And it's made it very easy for engineers and designers to set their IAQ targets. Step two is install air cleaning for gaseous contaminants. Inverid Systems uses a sorbent ventilation technology which is sorbent media that's coated in chemical compounds that give it a very high affinity to absorb, absor adsorb indoor air pollutants such as formaldehyde, volatile organic compounds, and carbon dioxide. Every building has its own unique set of challenges. Whether it's a new construction or an existing building, Inverid offers different form factors where this air cleaning can be integrated into the return ductwork directly into the space, or even integrated into an air handling unit. How do we determine the outdoor airflow rates? Typically, engineers are using the ventilation rate procedure, which is a prescriptive approach that calls for outdoor air based on the occupants in the space, the square footage of the space, and the type of the space. What we suggest is using the indoor air quality procedure. It's a performance-based method, which directly measures the contaminants and the emission rates, and this often results in a 60 to 80% reduction in the outdoor air requirement. In step four, after all of these steps have been integrated into the HVAC system, we have to validate and confirm that the contaminant concentration levels are below our design targets. We do this by both directly measuring concentration levels in the space and also handing out subjective occupant evaluations where they can directly rate the perceived indoor air quality. This is a brief summary of the clean first approach and how we are able to achieve improved air quality sustainably and with better resiliency. Thank you.